Hello. Something I was asked about recently was whether it's possible to have a PowerPoint presentation with a button on it or something that you can click and jump to a random slide within that presentation. I've actually seen quite a few teachers online asking about this so that they could have a presentation with the names of their students on each individual slide and then a button which will randomly jump to one of those slides and therefore randomly select a name of a student from the class. Um, yes, it is, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this presentation. It's quite straightforward. There is one line of code that we need, but I'll pop that bit of code in the uh, section underneath this video so you can simply copy and paste it, but I'll also explain how it works. So first of all, I'm going to start this from scratch. So I'm just going to create a, a PowerPoint presentation using one of the built-in templates. Obviously, you can create your own, but I'm just going to use this for the moment. And I'm going to get rid of the subtitle placeholder and the name of the student will go in this section here. I'll just put a title in for the moment. So before we start creating buttons, before we start creating slides with names on, what we need to do is to create a macro. A macro is a small bit of code, programming code, um, and that will help to generate the random number. Now, in order to create the macro, you will need this developer tab at the top. Now, don't worry, if you don't have it, and by default you won't have it, it's very easy to get up there. All you need to do is to right-click on any blank area of the toolbar at the top, the ribbon at the top, doesn't matter which tab you're in, just right-click somewhere in a blank area and click Customize the Ribbon. Now, in a few seconds, a panel will pop up. There we are. And you're looking in this list on the right-hand side. And about halfway down, we can see this option just here that says Developer. Now, mine has a tick in it because it's displayed, but yours may well not have a tick in it. So to get the Developer tab, all you do is click that tick box there and click OK. And you will then have this new Developer tab at the top. Now, to create a macro, um, on the left hand side click on the macros button and then we'll name our macro I'm going to call mine uh, random and then once you've put the name in there click create this opens up a new screen this is our coding screen uh, don't worry uh, we need as I say to write just one line of code so what is that one line of code well to begin with is active presentation dot slideshow window dot view dot go to slide so what that's saying is whatever the current PowerPoint presentation is we are going to change the view once we are in the slideshow view window so when we're actually presenting our presentation and we are going to go to a specific slide which slide are we going to go to well this is where we generate a random number to start this section with int, int, which is short for integer, because obviously we want a whole number. We don't want to have to go to slide 2.38. So int, and then in brackets, rnd, which obviously stands, stands for random, times by, this is how we generate a random number, so it's a random number times by, and then we want um, our upper limit. What is our upper limit? Well, it's the number of slides in our presentation. How do we know how many slides are in our presentation? We don't. We don't have to count that. We're using a computer. If there's one thing computers are brilliant at doing, it's counting. So let's get the computer to count how many slides there are in our presentation. We do that by simply saying active presentation again, dot slides dot count. Now that'll count the number of slides. However, there is one small problem. Uh, and that is that we count slides, and in fact PowerPoint uh, in the slideshow view counts slides starting from one. So slide one is one. However, um, VBA and most coding languages start counting from zero. So that's going to cause a problem. So we're going to have to put a little plus one here to add one to whatever the number is. So if it comes up with uh, a random number of zero, it adds one, and that is going to then generate um, slide one. 
However, we might not want slide one to be visible. I don't because slide one is my main title slide. So in fact, I want to just push it forward to one. So I'm going to do plus two here. Okay. Uh, there are, yes, smarter ways of doing this. Perhaps some people might comment and say, oh, you could do this, you could do that. Yes, but this works, and this is simple. So we're going to keep it simple. So there we are. That's our line of code, nothing else to it. Once you've done that, you can simply close this whole coding window here. Um, so we're back to our presentation. Okay, so now it's time to put a button onto our slide. So we're going to go to the Insert menu. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then into the Shapes menu, and right at the bottom is where we have these action buttons. Now, you could use any of those action buttons. The only real difference between them um, are the icons. I'm going to go for the blank one on the right-hand side, because then I'm going to put some uh, text in it. Now, once we've drawn this button out, you'll get this window. Don't worry if uh, you cancel that window. You can get it back again by right-clicking on the button and choosing Hyperlink. Uh, that will be a slightly different window to if you were to right click on any other shape and choose hyperlink. So this is the action settings uh, menu here. And of course, I mean, you may not be aware of it, but you can just choose this option hyperlink to uh, and you can hyperlink to any specific slide or URL or another PowerPoint presentation, a different file, the last slide we looked at, whatever that was. Uh, we're not going to use that, of course, but it's worth knowing that that's there if you weren't aware already. Uh, if you come down here to Run Macro, and you can see we've got a list of all the macros available. You probably only have the one, and it's the one you just created, so there's the name Random in there. Once you've chosen Run Macro, then we simply click OK. Oh, you could also put a sound to it if you wanted to, but I'm not going to bother with that. So click OK. And then we'll just format this button. So I'm going to right click on it and edit text. And I'll just put the word go in there. And then I'll just increase the font size a bit. This is all just sort of improving the visual appearance. It doesn't really make any difference to the uh, practical work, but I'll actually be using this. So I'm going to just turn it into a, a bit of a button. Let's have, uh, yeah, let's go for that one there. So I'm going to have my button just there. Right, so, so far, this button now will randomly select a slide except for the first slide, the one we're on. So, of course, it's not going to do much. So let's now start creating some duplicates of this slide, and then we can put names of students onto those duplicates. Now, of course, to duplicate a slide, we can right-click and duplicate slide. But if you have a class of 30 students, you don't have to right-click and duplicate each time. So a good shortcut to know is Control-D. Uh, I am using a Windows PC, so it's going to be slightly different if using a Mac version. My guess would be Command-D, but don't quote me on that. Um, if you know better, please pop it in the uh, comments box below. Um, I do use Macs, but I don't particularly enjoy it. Um, so Control D will duplicate that slide, it'll include the button, it'll include the macro, it'll include everything. So we can simply duplicate that on each slide, let's put a different uh, name. So I'll just do the ABC names here, so we'll have I have no first name that pops into my head for each letter. So let's duplicate again a couple of times, so C, let's have a Carol, um, and D, we'll have a Debbie. Uh, D, another couple. So we'll have Eve um, and we'll have Fiona. Um, yes, they're all female names. Sorry, I've got into that habit. I, uh, I teach in a girls' school. So uh, I sort of add, uh, let's have a, a couple of boys' names in to fair it up. Um, Gareth, uh, G H. Could it be Harry? There we are. So that's just a few. We'll we'll stop there. So obviously, you know, you can see how easy it is to put um, all these names in there, duplicating the slides. Um, and there's one more change that we might want to make because obviously, with a normal PowerPoint presentation, you can go sequentially uh, through each slide in your slideshow by either just clicking anywhere on the slide or using the arrow keys. 
and we probably want to prevent that. We only want to move between these slides by clicking this button. So what we'll do is we will remove the ability to move from one slide to the other by either just clicking anywhere on the slide or using the arrow buttons on our keyboard. How do we do that? Well, we head up to Slideshow at the top there and then set up Slideshow. The default show type is this one at the top, presented by a speaker in full screen. If we change that to browsed at a kiosk full screen, what that will do is force you to, force the user effectively, to um, browse your presentation by using these action buttons. There will be no other way of going through the presentation unless you set up automatic uh, slide timings. Uh, no other way for them to move between the slides except for using this button. Sort of almost like a kind of a website situation, I guess. So once you've made that change there, we click OK. And then let's look at saving this presentation because this is the final thing we need to be aware of. If you save a PowerPoint presentation normally, uh, what happens is that it will remove, or simply not save, any macros uh, that you have. So if you want to save a PowerPoint presentation which includes a macro, we cannot save it in this format here as a PowerPoint presentation. What we have to do is click on this Save As Type and change it to PowerPoint Macro Enabled Presentation. That's important. Once you've changed the file type, let's put the name in there. I'll just have to get rid of that exclamation mark because you can't save files uh, normally with an exclamation mark in them. So I'll just call it Let's Play and we'll click Save. So there we are. Um, and that's it. We've created our PowerPoint presentation. We've got the macro in there. We've got our button working. We've got all our slides with our student names on. Um, and we've saved it as a PowerPoint presentation with macros and as a kiosk show. That's, that's all there is to it. So now if I click play the slideshow, then here we are. We're on the um, first uh, screen. And we can see if we move the mouse over the go button, um, that's a hyperlink. Um, I can also show you, I don't know if you can tell, uh, I'm not sure if this uh, recording software actually shows where I'm clicking, but I'm clicking here on the slide and it's obviously not moving from one slide to another. The only way of moving is by using this button. And if I click on this button, you can see each time I click on it, it is randomly jumping to another slide with a student's name on it. Now, this doesn't um, take away the possibility that you're going to have duplicates. So I could click on a button and apparently nothing would happen. Don't worry if, if nothing happens. It probably simply means that you have randomly chosen the same slide that you're already on. Uh, there's a, there are ways we could, uh, we could do that, but that ends up being more complicated code. If you're interested and you'd like to know, please do uh, you know drop me a message, leave a comment below in the video, um, or send me an email through the website, techtrain.co.uk. Um, but basically, uh, this will work for most people. If you do, do get a duplicate name, you can simply click the button again. I've only got, um, what, seven or eight different uh, names in here, so of course, I'm gonna get lots of duplicates. If you have a class of 30, then it's less likely that you'll have a duplicate. Anyway, there we are. That's how to create uh, a button which will randomly jump to any slide within your PowerPoint presentation, apart from your first slide if you wish. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do give this video a like and consider subscribing so that you pick up the new videos that I regularly release with other helpful tips and useful advice which you might find helpful. Um, please do leave a comment or a question if you have any, and thank you very much indeed for watching. I'll see you in a future video.